Hi everybody, welcome back to my updated for 2024 guide to modding DAISY PC community servers and in this video we're going to be talking about how you can change the name of your newly acquired DAISY server and we're going to be talking about how you can change access to it yeah, by adding a password and I'm also going to give you some information about direct connect as well in case you're having trouble actually connecting to your server to get into it in a game now before we get started though just a quick reminder that in the description below this video you'll find a link to the playlist that has all of these updated for 2024 videos so if you kind of have a basic idea of what you want to know, do or what you want to learn you can pick and choose which ones you want to watch you'll also find a previous and next link so that you can work through them in some sort of logical order i've tried to record them in some sort of logical order and you'll also find a link to my console version of these videos if you're coming at this from a console point of view um, also sometimes because i do record videos about the same subject i approach them from a slightly different angle in different videos so maybe if i haven't explained it properly in one video maybe another video would be better um, so you can do that that way okay so in the previous video we talked about why and where and how you might want to rent a, um, a, a daisy pc community server so now you've got one so now you want to change the name and control access so if you go to your nitrado dashboard you and find the server click on the web interface and this will take you through to here how fantastic is this so it's all very exciting and if we scroll down a bit we'll see we've got a name of our server there just a generic name it gives we haven't got any players we've got our ip address um, what map it's running right now what version of daisy that's important when we have updates so we know whether the server's been updated or not nitrado does update servers automatic automatically for as well it updates the server dz.exe file so that it updates the file that runs the server but it doesn't update the mission files which control things like new loot but don't worry we'll cover that in videos to come and then up here we have the ip as well so if you ever have trouble trying to access your server and you can't find it in the community server list when you search for it you can always click on direct connect and here you can see ip address and port so what you can do is you can copy that there and you can control v paste that oop, paste that in um uh, get, we can just cut that out put the port into there so we've got that and then you could connect to it like that and obviously you would add to favorites as well so that would then be in your favorites bar so if you're ever, ever having trouble connecting um, that's a good place to start just remember though that if you can't see your server in the community tab and you can't direct connect to it it could be that you've got a problem with the server and it's not running properly okay so so just remember that okay so back to our server now what we're going to do now is we're going to go to settings and we're going to go to general here we go okay so what nitrado do let's go full screen so you can get a better view of this what nitrado do is they make things nice and easy for us if we want them to be um so we are going to be using the expert mode in a moment to change things um but we can actually put entries in if we don't want to go in uh, expert mode you can use these settings down here um, but what we're going to do because we're learning how to mod we're going to go to expert mode so we're going to click that and it's going to say whoa are you sure and you say yes and so dunk and we'll save changes and there we go we're over to expert mode so you'll notice some of these settings have kind of disappeared now um, and then we've got some other settings that we can still play around with however this isn't completely clear because some of these settings that you see here that we can access are actually in the expert settings but let's go and have a look at the expert settings and then it will you kind of understand it more so if we now click on expert settings over here this again looks a little bit more complicated than it is now this file that we can see here is is the server dz.config file so if you had your own dedicated server in the cloud, which is your own computer in a data center somewhere, and you were setting it up, one of the files that you would upload and have is the server dz.config. And this kind of tells the server um, about how to start itself, if you like. When it fires itself up, what sort of parameters should it start with? 
in and it also does that with another file a dot bat file that tells it which mods to start off with but this is things like um, what's the password what's the server called how long should the day and night be um, things like that so that's what the server DZ config does now with nitrado we don't have direct access to this file in the fact that we can't download it and edit edit it on our local computer however this is the file here it's just in like a text editor on the browser um, actually yeah you can you can download it but you can't upload it um, um, so so that well, can, can you load it if I click load can I load it no it's just loading the latest one isn't it there we go please stop your game server before attempt to edit files in expert mode so let's stop that there that's gonna stop the server quite a few settings you'll notice you can change while the server is running however what you'll find a common uh, theme a common thread that will run through the way that we're doing things when we're editing our server is often we will stop the server before we change files because many of the files we're working on are being accessed by the server as it's working and we don't want to be messing around with that because it could cause the server to to fail to crash it could cause things to become uh, corrupt and things like that okay so first thing host name so what are we going to call our server so we're going to call our well my server is going to be scale speeder if i can spell speeder right pc i'll call this my tests oh tell you, we call it our bg server beginner's guide server there we go because we're going to use this and my password is going to be um bg for beginner's guide there we go you can leave the admin password we don't need that we're not using a whitelist um um, because the the reason for that is that if you're coming from console, you probably go, oh, aren't whitelist a great idea? They are on console because they're re very easy to do. With a console whitelist, you just add people's Xbox username or PlayStation username to the whitelist list, and then it looks for that. On PC, it's not as simple as that. Um, on PC, you have something called your Steam ID. So within Steam, they get the, you know, the launcher that you buy games from, you have an ID on that. But that doesn't relate to the whitelist that is used by DayZ. And the reason for this is because they want to protect people's privacy. So they don't want people, server owners like ourselves, when someone comes onto our server, they don't want us to be able to see their Steam ID. Because once we know that, we can work out who they are and where they are and all this sort of stuff. So what happens is when they log into the your server, they're given this number. And so you have to get that number off a log and then put it into whitelist so it's quite a long and involved process it's a simple process but it's a bit long and involved so i'm not going to be covering it in in these videos so for now what we're going to do is we're just going to go with a password access obviously the problem with passwords is passwords can be swapped uh, can just be given to people so you may find if you have a uh, as your community grows and passwords are handed around you may have to have a system where you change the password regularly so that is then reissued to people so if it gets out into the wild you know people you don't want to be on your server aren't allowed onto your server okay so let's scroll down and have a look at these few things now um, max players if you've only got a five per slot, a four slot server you can't magically increase it by putting 10 or 20 on here you know it doesn't work like that uh, verify signatures um, and things like this we're not going to talk about them in this video um, but th they can do stuff here we go this is stuff we're really interested in so disabled first person um, now often in these files when we're working through them um, when you have a parameter or you have a setting um, whether it is on or off whether it is yes or no whether it is true or false will sometimes be delineated by zero and one so often zero is uh, false or no and one is true however depending on the wording of the setting it might not always be obvious because sometimes you have to do a double negative so at the moment with this server disabled third person is zero so we're not disabling third person so people on this pc server can switch between first and third person view so you could um, change that um, you could go from naught to one um, and if it was one we'd disable that disable crosshair so at the moment the crosshair will appear so again you could disable that by putting one so disable personal light so this says one is true so um so what we're saying here is that the personal light is when it's really dark in daisy you know, like on a cloudy night what happens is your your player actually does kind of 
emanate a little bit of light so you can see what you're doing. If this is on, so if this is disabled, so disabled person light is true, dark nights are really dark. So you could turn that off if you want a more um, beginner friendly sort of environment. Um, so that's that one. Then we've got things like the time. I'm going to cover these in a, in a slightly different video. Um, let's scroll down. Here we've got the uh, the map that we're using. Again, I'll cover this in a different video. Um, and then we can scroll down. So we've got things like disable base damage. Again, we're going to cover these in different videos because they're covered by different files. The one thing you do want to change now, though, apart from the name and the password, is enable CFG gameplay file. We might as well, while we're here, change that to one. This is a very important file that we're going to be editing quite a lot as we go along. And we'll be covering videos about that. So we just hit save change. Wait for the server to save it. Which it has done. And so now, if we were to go to uh, the Daisy launcher and uh, look up a scale speeder PC BG server, we could, it will appear after a while, won't appear straight away. Um, and then we would use the password capital B capital G to get onto it. Now remember, sometimes this can take quite a while, so you may have to use a direct connect to start off with. Um, and you might remember in the previous video we talked about ping. If people are trying to join your server from a long way away and there's a long ping, sometimes servers don't appear in the launcher. Um, and the launcher can be fairly buggy. So what I would say is that share that direct connect information um, that we got from our server. So this direct information here, share that on your Discord, share that in your Facebook group. So if people have trouble finding it in the Daisy server browser, which can be a little bit buggy, at least then they'll be able to direct connect to it, add it to their favorites, and they'll be good to go. So there we go. That is how you control access to your PC server by changing the name and then changing the password. And all we need to do now is hit start server. The server dz.config will take effect and we'll be ready to go. Okay. So I hope you found this useful. If you have it, like, you want to see more of the same, press subscribe. And of course, I'll see you again soon.